breathe together. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Erica Deneve. My pronouns are she, they, and I will be your service leader this morning. As Unitarian Universalists, we are bound together not by a common set of beliefs, but by our promise to support one another in our individual searches for truth and meaning, guided by our principle and drawing from many sources. We do hope you feel welcome here. Whatever you believe or do not believe, whomever you love, however you understand family, whatever your age, race, or ability, you are welcome here. We invite you to join us in a journey of free thought, spiritual questing, and justice making for as long as you feel comfortable to do so. We extend a special welcome to our visitors this morning, both here and online, please join us after the service for conversation. Not online, of course, but you can join us in the chat and please leave us comments. We begin our gathering acknowledging that we are located on Treaty 6 territory. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. Our community extends beyond the Sunday morning gathering we have a monthly newsletter available online, and you can join our virtual community on Facebook and Twitter to keep up to date on happenings in our extended community. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us let go, just for a time, of the everyday world. We will quiet ourselves, our phones and devices, and we will create a space in this hour to simply be together in the spirit of life and love, we gather. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, Rosemary, are you gonna start? Thank you, Erica. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. My name is the Reverend Rosemary Morrison and I am privileged and honored to serve this congregation. I'd like to add my, uh, my welcome to Erica's, welcome online, welcome in here in the sanctuary. I've got a couple of announcements. Today's the last day to sign up for Soul Matters. If you'd like to be in a Soul Matters group, um, make sure you let me know, give, give me a piece of paper with your name on it, or email me, Reverend, R-E-V-R-O-S-E -E at uce.ca or Reverend Rosemary at uce.ca or they all get to me. So I don't think so. Oh, it's changed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we may need to to Zoom. Okay. Yeah. No, it's filling up. There is, yeah. There is at least 20 folks that have signed up for Soul Matters. So we are looking forward to some really interesting conversations, and a big contingent of our congregation enriching the Sunday services and their lives with Soul Matters small group ministry. Um, Jan is going to announce Soup Sunday, but I'm going to say that on. We're going to have Soup Sunday next Friday, but the Friday after the, uh, next Sunday, and then the Friday after that is Friday is for food and fun, which I will be hosting. I'm going to make a pot of chili, kind of have a Mexican theme, uh, just so that it's not soup and then soup. <laughs> We're going to have soup on Sunday and then chili, uh, and then chili on Friday. I'll put out some games and some tables, and it's just a relaxed, family-friendly, fun bring friends, colleagues, neighbors, and I'll let Jan speak to Soup Sunday coming up. Yes, that's right, Soup's on. And so next Sunday, in, enjoy the company and lunch with everybody, plan to stay after church. 
and uh, there are sign-ups for some more soups if you want to make a pot of soup, and we would love to have some help setting up and clean up after. So uh, we'll see you next week. And I think, Audrey, you had an announcement as well. I've been asked by Scott Sharplin to let the congregation know that his mother, Bonnie, is now uh, going to hospice after uh, almost two years of being able to deal with her cancer. She has come to the conclusion that it's time for her to move on. I have a card here that shows us an eagle flying for anyone who has been her friend for as many years as we have in this congregation to uh, make a comment or something for her. Her, her member of her extended family from Nepal is here and her son is here and her, her demeanor has soared. She's in a very good place. So. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. I'm sure you'll have that card available after the service for people who want to sign it. Okay. In order to focus ourselves for the service, I invite you to an opening time of reflection as we listen to the prelude that marks the start. Thank you, that was lovely. Bonnie is going to come up and light the chalice for me now. These words this Thanksgiving morning are entitled, What We Bring, What We Are Grateful For. We light our chalice this morning with a spirit of gratitude. We are here today on this Thanksgiving Sunday full of hope and questions. We bring ourselves, and that is enough. We are grateful for life, for each other, our planet, and our strivings. May this light allow us to see what has been hidden, what is important, and how we need to be with one another. Thank you. And now we will sing together Hymn number 347, Gather the Spirit. Please rise as you're willing and able.
Does that work? Yeah? I had a lot of power in the pocket. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> All right, so we're going to read a story. It's called The Last Stop on Market Street. And if you're watching this service on YouTube later on, know that this story will be omitted from the video because of copyright. And so um, if you want to see it, you can just look it up. The Last, last Stop on Market Street by Matt de la Pena and then you should be able to, to see it. But I'm going to read it from here, but the book's over there. There we go. <laughs> so probably the recording's going on again by now, and then Erica is up next with Sharing Our Abundance. All this work, it's so hard to get in a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment beyond our walls. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. Some are local, some national, some international. For the month of October, I have no idea who we're giving it to. Child it's still Child Haven, okay. Child Haven is amazing. Um, I'm well familiar with this organization. Um, Bonnie and Fred Cappuccino um, started this organization many, many years ago. After they ran out of kids to adopt, they <laughs> adopted 22, um, and they started several different or uh, orphanages in India, Bangladesh, and Nepal. They are entirely supported by donations. They get no government funds. And uh, so they run a series of dinners and uh, silent auctions at those dinners um, to be able to support the orphanages that they run. It is an amazing organization and they are wonderful people. Um, so for those in the sanctuary, you can use the envelopes found on the inside cover of your hymn book if you wish to receive a tax receipt for your gift. Please indicate on the envelope your contact information so we can send you a tax receipt at year end. Many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts. For those of you online, we encourage you to visit Child Haven's uh, website where you can donate uh, directly through there. The offering will now be received. Thank you for your generosity and your support. With our time, talents, and our money, we support the work of the community and this Unitarian Universalist tradition. It is now time in our service where we light candles of joy and concern. But before we do, I just want to make mention of the eruption of violence in the Middle East that has happened over the last couple of days. And just to hold that um, in our hearts and minds as we move through this service. It was disheartening to read about it, and I can't even imagine how it is to be living there at this time, or in any of, of the war-torn place, war -torn places on the, on the planet, which there are so many right now. May we find peace. And from that, I invite you here in the sanctuary to light a candle of joy or concern, whatever it is that you are holding in your hearts, as 
Lighting a candle is kind of a way of acknowledging that there's something special in our lives, and we light the candle to share that. I invite you now, and David, if you wouldn't mind closing the back doors, that would be awesome. Thank you. Friends, we've come into this sacred space, lighting candles of joy and concern. Each candle represents something we hold dear. Let's look at the candles. They're so beautiful. The light in here is so gorgeous today. And we've lit up the sanctuary with our thoughts, our hearts, our minds. And I'm going to ask Erica to light one last candle representing all those things that maybe we haven't, haven't even thought about yet, that is percolating under the surface. Thank you. So did you uh, notice that the sermon is in two parts today? So when I get to the end of this part, I want you to know that you can't think, that was a pretty short sermon. 
Excuse me? Oh, there's a hymn first. <laughs> Number 21, for the beauty of the earth, that we can sing about the gorgeous earth on this gorgeous Thanksgiving Sunday. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. Excellent. So I invite you to sing hymn number 21, Rise in Body or in Spirit, as you are willing and able. Okay, now I have part one of a sermon. 1.5? 1. 1. 1.5, yeah. Good one. The reading this morning is an article from Forbes magazine published on November 22nd, 2017, written by Louis E. Romero. And he says, Gratitude is the act of feeling and communicating appreciation for the people, circumstances, and material possessions in our lives. It allows us to cherish our present, present in ways that make us feel in, abun in abundance rather than deprived. As a result, we get more motivated, less fatigued, and ultimately better off. Scientifically, the positive effects of gratitude have been proven for a variety of purposes. For, his, for example, in his book, The Upward Spiral, using neuroscience to reverse the course of depression, one small change at a time, Alex Korb talks about how gratitude boosts the neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin, and the hormone oxytocin, all associated with well-being and having a positive outlook on life. Other examples can be found in Deepak Chopra's article, Sowing Seeds of Gratitude to Cultivate Well-Being, where the co-authors reference clinical studies that prove the positive effects of gratitude on the recovery of patients with symptomatic and asymptomatic heart disease, heart failure. Not even like mental health stuff, but actual physical manifestations of gratitude. In these and other studies, science has been proving clinical, has been providing clinical proof, supporting what many religions and spiritual traditions have been predicating for millennia. Gratitude does good. Gratitude might be the ultimate spiritual practice. In his article, Deepak Chopra also draws a powerful equivalency between the physical and mental well-being resulting from gratitude and the development of a higher spirituality. 
in fact, requiring no special training, theological studies, or exhausting practice, gratitude might be the ultimate spiritual practice. This Thanksgiving Day, let us recognize the blessings in our lives and be thankful for our families, friends, talents, and everything else we have. No training required, just an open heart and the right disposition. That could be just as much as needs to be said, couldn't it? Could just go, all go home now. That's, I thought that was really a great article. So has anyone here in the sanctuary or online uh, with, that are with us had or are using or have a spiritual practice in gratitude? Yeah, quite a few of you. That's excellent. I have before. I, it was a while ago. I, I wake up every morning and with gratitude. I always say thank you. I'm always happy that my eyes opened and everything kind of looks the same as it did the day before, so I'm always grateful around that. Um, but when I was actually doing a spiritual practice on gratitude, I, I remember that it, it made me notice things. And I had this pressure to write something down in my gratitude journal every day, which is why I ended up quitting, because I'm not very good at writing things down in a gratitude journal. But it made me pay attention to the world in a different way. Society today would like us to be un unsatisfied with our lives, because then what are we going to do? We are going to do retail therapy to feel better about ourselves and our surroundings. What if instead... We decided to feel better about ourselves and our lives without the consumerism. It's a radical act. To feel good about yourself and be happy with what you have is a radical act just in itself. This does not mean, of course, that anyone that does not have adequate, resource, adequate uh, resources should be happy with that, what they have. I'm not saying that. No, in fact, we need to advocate for the equal and fair distribution of wealth and resources. Have you ever gone through a time in your life when you had most of what you needed, and yet you were profoundly unhappy or unsatisfied? I know I certainly have. Sometimes it means that we need to take stock of our situation and make some changes. And sometimes it means that we need to pay attention to our spirit. Sometimes it means that we need to begin to change our own attitude about ourselves and our situation. My humble opinion, it certainly means that there is some personal work that needs to be done. Do you know what I mean by personal work? Anybody besides Alara? <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so what I mean by that, I will explain, because there's a, there's a few of us that know. I, we, we begin to understand ourselves, engage in some spiritual practices. We might need to get, or even when we don't need to get, we are engaging in a counseling or a spiritual direction process. We begin to notice our own thoughts. Are my thoughts and the tapes in my head being kind or unkind to me and my personhood? If our tapes are self-critical, which they usually are unless we work on them, it means that we need to do some personal work. I've got a catch in my throat. In the mystical traditions of Judaism and Islam, the work to find God, or whatever you want to think of as God, is always the work to understand ourselves. So Al-Ghazali, who, who lived in the 11th century, he predated, um, uh, it's not going to come, I should have written it down. So he was a Sufi from the 11th century, and he said, if you want to find God, Find yourself, and therein you will find God. And remember, in the 11th century, everything was kind of um, referenced to a divine being. 
And this is why I so often say personal growth and spiritual growth are the same darn thing. They're not different. I can say spiritual growth, and if you don't like that, you can just say, oh, she means personal growth, because they're the same thing, and the same outcome happens. We get to know ourselves better. We are able to begin to recognize our patterns and our habits, begin to question our own motives, finish our own thoughts, understand why we are sometimes mean-spirited, or get upset easily about a particular thing and where our little reactive buttons are, what, ha what makes us kind of feel upset and angry. Spiritual practices like gratitude can help us greatly in our personal spiritual growth. Remember, they're the same thing. For folks like us living here in Canada, we have a hard time understanding why in places like India, where Child Haven originated, where the living conditions are incredibly crowded, where people are living in abject poverty. So many millions have nothing, what appears to be nothing. And they're living in conditions we cannot even imagine. And yet, it is reported that these people are joyful. Very often, people that visit India say they have nothing, but there's joy. I know many of you have been to India to, to spend time at Child Haven with the cappuccinos, a very important thing to do and a very worthwhile cause that we are supporting. So please, if you can, support them. Perhaps those of you that have been to Child Haven can attest to the fact that people living in conditions we could not be happy with are also living with joy. So what's first, joy or gratitude? Brother David Stendhal Rast would tell you that it's gratitude, as would many other spiritual leaders and teachers down through the ages Brother David would tell us that our satisfaction and our joy comes from noticing and, more importantly, being grateful for the things we do have rather than the things that we don't have. Take us here at UCE, for example. We could focus on the gaps or the things that need to be attended to, or this problem, or that problem, and we could think that UCE is lacking in some way. Or we could focus in on the things that UCE has going for it, that we have going for us, like this building being paid off that is mostly self-sufficient. A dedicated group of volunteers and leaders, this beautiful sanctuary, our growing membership, our hard-working teams that are figuring out how to stop the gaps and develop our systems. But more importantly, we can look around and see all the wonderful people that are here this morning and other mornings and be grateful for we are because we are here, doing something important together learning about ourselves and one another through our time on Sunday mornings and beyond, sharing food and table on Soup Sunday and then on uh, Food is for Fun and Fellowship. Fridays are for fun and food on the Friday after. We could focus on the fact that there may be new people that you haven't even met yet or gotten to know. How exciting is that? Look around after church and see if you can find someone you don't know and perhaps say hello, have a word with them. We could be grateful for our wonderful choir and talented music directors that took our service last Sunday and the list of things we could be grateful for here at UCE goes on and on. Friends, here on this Thanksgiving morning, what are you grateful for about yourself, your home, your family, your pets, your communities? Many people in the world would be astounded 
and grateful beyond belief if they could turn on a tap and get running and safe hot and cold water or flick a switch in the middle of the night and get light. For millions of people on this planet now, these things that we take for granted are completely unfathomable. If you're having trouble finding something to be grateful for, I invite you to look a little harder. And perhaps in the looking, you will find joy. I agree with the scholars, the scientists, the gurus, and the mystics. If we wish to feel joy, we must first be grateful. And I am grateful for each and every one of you for this congregation, for the ministries that are established and developing here, for our river, valley, and trails, for simply being here with you on this beautiful Thanksgiving morning. And I'm also really thankful that my son is coming for Thanksgiving this afternoon. I'm very excited. They're on the road now. In just a moment, we're going to watch a video from Empty Hands Music. I've been in touch with Nemo, and he has given permission for us to use this video and any video he has created, actually, and we've seen a couple of his other videos. And he's okay with it being up on our YouTube channel, so it's not, the recording doesn't need to be stopped. He only wants his message of joy, gratitude, love, and compassion to get out into the world We'll get some lights adjusted and the video will come on and we'll turn off the chancel lights. And I hope if you enjoy this video even a fraction as much as I do, you will find joy. Grateful. A love story. A love song to the world by Empty Hands Music. It'll probably just take a minute to get it all set up. Or two. You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest You're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love You're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug You're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun You're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter You're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father You're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds You're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow You're the strength when I follow, you're the path that I follow You're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss The gift to realize that all that I I'm 
pray cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I give back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for The small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. happy if we didn't have any lights but that's just me um, am I doing just the meditation now or am I doing my reflection first because oh. that's not in the order of service I thought your meditation was your reflection oh okay well I'll just go with that then I'll roll with it mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all good <laughs> We can do that, absolutely. So we are going to enter into a time of meditation right now, and we are going to do something a little bit different. So I would like you first to all get comfortable and just relax into your chairs. This meditation that I'm going to lead you through today is um, from the Haudenosaunee uh, Confederacy and it is uh, called the Thanksgiving Address. It is not specifically about the Thanksgiving holiday. It is a, uh, a series of um, giving thanks to different beings that they use whenever they have a gathering of people um, to bring themselves together and center themselves within all of the web of creation. And when we think about gratitude, I think sometimes we miss the idea of being grateful for all of the other beings and that web. And so I am going to lead you through the Thanksgiving address right now. And I invite you just to settle yourself into your chair, close your eyes, 
breathe through this now and take in these words. Today we have gathered, and when we look upon the faces around us, we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now let us bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. We are thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us everything that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she still continues to care for us, just as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send thanksgiving, love, and respect. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst, for providing strength and nurturing life for all beings. We know its power in many forms, waterfalls and rain, mists and streams, rivers and oceans, snow and ice. We are grateful that the waters are still here and meeting their responsibility to the rest of creation. Can we agree that water is important to our lives and bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to the water? Now our minds are one. We turn our thoughts to all of the fish life in the water. They were instructed to cleanse and purify the water. We are grateful that they continue to do their duties and we send to the fish our greetings and our thanks. Now our minds are one. Now we turn towards the vast fields of plant life. As far as the eye can see, the plants grow, working many wonders. They sustain many life forms. With our minds gathered together, we give thanks and look forward to seeing plant life for many generations to come. Now our minds are one. When we look about us, we see that the berries are still here, providing us with delicious foods. The leader of the berries is the strawberry, the first to ripen in the spring. Can we agree that we are grateful that the berries are with us in the world and send our thanksgiving, love, and respect to the berries? Now our minds are one. With one mind, we honor and thank all the food plants we harvest from the garden, especially the three sisters who feed the people with such abundance. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and fruit have helped the people survive. Many other living things draw strength from them as well. We gather together in our minds all the plant foods and send them a greeting and thanks. Now our minds are one. Now we turn to the medicine herbs of the world. From the beginning, they were instructed to take away sickness. They were always waiting and ready to heal us. We are so happy that they are still among us, those special few who remember how to use the plants for healing. With one mind, 
we send thanksgiving, love, and respect to the medicines and the keepers of the medicines. Now our minds are one. Standing around us, we see all the trees. The earth has many families of trees who each have their own instructions and uses. Some provide shelter and shade, others fruit and beauty and many useful gifts. Many peoples of the world recognize a tree as a symbol of peace and strength. With one mind, we greet and thank the tree life. Now our minds are one. We gather our minds together to send our greetings and thanks to all the beautiful animal life in the world who walk about with us. They have many things to teach us as people. We are grateful that they continue to share their lives with us and hope that it will always be so. Let us put our minds together as one and send our thanks to the animals. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who move and fly about over our heads. They were given the gift of beautiful songs. Each morning they greet the day and with their songs remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. To all the birds, from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. We are thankful for the winds. We hear their voices in the morning as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help to bring the change of seasons from the four directions they come, bringing us messages and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the winds. Now our minds are one. We now send greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day, without fail, he travels the sky from east to west, bringing the light of a new day. He is the source of all the fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together and give thanks for our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the nighttime sky. She is the leader of women all over the world, and she governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time, and it is the moon who watches over the arrival of children here on Earth. Let us gather our thanks for Grandmother Moon together in a pile, layer upon layer of gratitude, and then joyfully fling that pile of thanks high into the night sky so that she will know. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our grandmother, the moon. We give thanks to the stars who are spread across the sky like jewelry. We see them at night, helping the moon to light the darkness and bringing dew to the gardens and growing things. When we travel at night, they guide us home with our minds gathered as one. We send greetings and thanks to all the stars. Now our minds are one. We gather our minds to greet and thank the wisdom keepers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, 
They remind us of the way we were instructed to live as people. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to these caring wisdom keepers. Now our minds are one. We now turn our thoughts to creation, to the gods, the spirits, and our ancestors. We send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on Mother Earth. For all the love that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. And now I invite you to just take a nice deep breath. Let all of that settle into your bones and gently open your eyes. And Rosemary is going to continue. My mic now? Yes, thank you. Power is in the pocket. I, I know that the words and the video went by pretty fast. Did you like the video? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that awesome? I've watched it so many times, every time I, I might cry. So I know the words went by pretty fast and it, it wasn't subtitled. Uh, so I'm just going to read a couple snippets along with the chorus. And it begins with You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest. You're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love. You're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere and the clouds. You're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss. The gift to realize that everything is a gift, so I lift up my hands now and I open my heart and my gratitude goes out to everything near and far. And the chorus is, all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all. I'm going to say, put it into a little snippet, tiny, but going to break it down, and I invite you to, as you can, Repeat it after me. Let's see it together. All that I am. All that I see. All that I've been. And all that I'll ever be. Is a blessing. It's so amazing. And I'm grateful for it all. We're going to do it once more. All that I am, all that I, am. All that I see, all that I've ever been, and all that I'll ever be, is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all. Now, if we were in the South, I'd say, can I have an amen? <laughs> There you go. I might, we might have to transport to the south every once in a while. So have you ever thought of yourself as being a blessing? I wonder if you could stop for a moment right now and think about how you have been a blessing in this past day, 
this week, this month. What does that even mean, Reverend Rosemary, you might be asking? Well, how did you brighten someone's day? When did you treat someone well or help them see their own potential? When did you last tell someone you loved them? Did you treat a stranger with respect, a street person with respect, or the grocery store clerk? Did you use their name, give them a smile? I can only imagine the gargantuan number of times this group, online and here and later on on YouTube, I can only imagine the gargantuan number of times you beautiful people were a blessing, just even on this day. So please, take a moment and think about how you are a blessing to those of you, to those people around you. And then, does everybody have a leaf? If you don't have a leaf, they're in the back. And um, put up your hand, and Rosemary Falconer is there, and will come and give you a leaf and a pencil if you need it. But she doesn't know she's doing that, so thank you. I think a few people snuck in after the leaves were turned, uh, the not <coughs> were turned out. So take a moment and think about how you are, Rosemary, over there. Yeah, how you are, a, a, how you are, or were a blessing to those around you, and then write down a word or two on one side of your leaf and just hold on to it for a moment. Who else needs a leaf? Oh. M up front here, thanks. So just take a few seconds, write something down on your leaf that you can think of that tells the world that you are a blessing. And for those of you online, I invite you to put something into the chat and maybe comment on each other's blessings. Just give you about 30 seconds for that. everybody doing? Do you need one more sec? If you can't think of anything, I want you to know that you're a blessing to me by being here this morning. So if you can't think of anything else, you can put that down. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. So your second task with your leaf is much easier and is the traditional Thanksgiving question. What in your life are you especially grateful for? What have you found in this thing that you will mention that brings you joy? And then Karen will once again play for us as we write on the second, on the other side of our leaf. And then when you are ready, you can come and put it on the the tree that uh, Gordon and Robert have, have um, created for us, and uh, Gordon and Robert have also created the leaves for us this morning, so thank you. So what is it you are grateful for on this Thanksgiving Sunday? I invite you to think about that, and as you are ready, to go and hang your leaf on our tree. And if you're online, please put something into the chat and maybe have a conversation with the others online.
So now that we've explored being grateful, what do you think comes first, joy or gratitude? I'll leave it up to you to decide, but of course, I've decided it's gratitude, <laughs> just so you know. And perhaps you'd like to experiment with a gratitude practice of your own if you are not already doing so. But for now, though, we know that love guides us, sustains us, brings us joy, makes us grateful. Love is not finite, but expansive. And I invite you, in, when, as you're ready, to rise in body or in spirit to sing our last hymn together, Love Will Guide Us, hymn number 131, if you're using the Cart Jarkle hymn book. <laughs> those glasses or I can't see anything that I'm doing. <laughs> Bonnie, would you like to come up for extinguishing the flame, please? These words by Charles Howe, may we go forth from this place. May we go forth from this place, thankful for the life that sustains and renews us, and open to the grace that surrounds and surprises us. May we go forth from this place with openness and thanksgiving. Before I do the benediction, I'd like to thank you all for being here in person and online. And later on, if you're watching on YouTube, I'd also like to thank everyone that participated and contributed to this service. There's too many to name, but we know that there is a lot of hands that go into making a service like this one this morning. Technical, musical, words, sound, producing. There's just so much that happens for us on a Sunday morning. And so, and now I offer you these words of benediction. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things sometimes break, don't they? But things can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So go and love intentionally, love extravagantly, and most of all, love unconditionally. For the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is within you. Go now in peace, gentle people. Go oh, in peace. And let us join together and sing our linking song, Carry the Flame. The words will be up here if you don't, if you haven't got it memorized. 